So this job's been going okay. That's the ceiling uh, you see me papering. Uh, all the walls are finished. So all I've got left to do is to put this wallpaper uh, on this feature wall. So I've blocked up the window a bit because the sun's going to be a nightmare today on this one. Um, so some of the stuff I've got, this paper, that's what the paper is. And this one is a, a drop pattern which repeats every 53 centimetres. Um, it's a Italian vinyl wall covering. So for the corners you need an overlap adhesive, which that's what I'm using. That's one of the best that you can use. And I've got some paste which I'm going to mix strong because this is quite heavy paper and I've already mixed it. So first thing what I'm going to do, I've checked all the batch numbers, they're all the same. Um, I've colour shaded, you know, check the colour shades on them. Uh, so when you start papering a wall, depending on what type of wall it is, you always start from the natural light and work away. Um, some people, you know, if it's a different feature wall, you can probably start in the middle and work your pattern out from side to side, but it all depends on the light in the room. Um, and the pattern itself with this pattern it's not going to matter too much so starting in that corner is fine first thing you want to do is just double check where your wallpaper comes to around the corner because with that chimney breast being there, you want to keep the pattern coming round correctly. But what you don't want to end up doing is having a joint right on the corner if you can help it. So I'll just show you me working out of that. Taking a roll of wallpaper and your pencil, just have a look where your paper sits on the wall with an inch. With an inch return, so you've got uh, enough to cut off when you're doing your trimming. You can put a pencil mark to see where they start sitting. Well, that's not working out too bad, really. That works out just nicely, that around there. So then what you want to do is off that first mark you just put on, along the line. spirit level if you want but I always find my plumb line can go in my back pocket and no matter where I am on the job I've got it with me and I don't have to get it down off my steps to get a, a spirit level or anything you can use a chalk line as well um, but I find just a couple of pencil marks for me is fine What you want to do is take a tape measure and making sure you've got an inch to an inch and a half overlap either side for your trimming off. That's 
three, four, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's three foot eleven that. Leaving me enough to cut off. So what I'm going to do now is cut the first two pieces because unfortunately my third piece is going to have to be a full length but there's going to be a lot of waste on it because I'll have to trim round and just bring an edge down I mean you could take it to the and splice in another length um, which I'm probably going to do actually because there's a mirror that goes on the wall here so it'll just be a fine slice across that little bit there. So what I'm going to do is cut three lengths for this bit. Opening your paper face up on the bench, which this allows you to obviously see the pattern and you can see any defects within the pattern. Usually what I like to do is just double check, have a look over the pattern and see where you want the pattern lying at the top of the ceiling. Uh, and looking on this paper, you've got some flowers. Now what I don't want is to leave a flower split between the ceiling. So what I'm going to do is try and get the ceiling line through a decent bit of the pattern, which coming to the top here, cut through there always make sure you've got your bench straight so as you're cutting your cuts are straight so now when that goes up an inch overlap cut off and I'm not cutting through a flower next thing you want to do is measure down from that and we said it was 3 foot 11 inches so 3 foot and 11 inches and you can make a cut across I've just remembered though with this being a drop pattern the chances are with my next piece going on I might end up cutting through a flower um, that usually works better with a repeat pattern rather than a drop pattern and with a drop pattern you're better off working your next length off your next roll and alternate your rolls which allows for less waste so taking your other piece find where the pattern is and the drop pattern means it's in between basically so you find where the pattern repeats, repeats and then you put it halfway pull it across the bench and you should find that it'll match and there's the match so when you've got the match on the other side of the bench what I usually do is hold my hand at the top there Find the match, find the top edge of the other paper, and then just move it across, and you found it. That's it. Now you can do your trimming off of the paper. too bad actually it's not going to go through a flower so going back to your first roll you was using the next piece will be the same as your first piece and then the next piece after that would be the same as your second piece so match 
matching up to that first piece. Now always double check because you don't want to have too much waste. I'm just going to check this other roll because every pattern is different. You see, yeah, there's less waste using that one. So I'll go with that one. It all depends on the size of the pattern. Right. So that's my first three lengths that I need. So next what you want to do is mark the top of your paper. Now usually the top of your paper is the beginning but on some rolls you find they've rolled it the wrong way so the bottom of your paper is usually the beginning so then you have to uh, I usually roll them the opposite way so it makes life easier but this one's okay so we'll make a mark at the top of your paper so you know which one is which and then being very careful, roll your paper back the other way on itself. And then just gently squeeze it back. And what this does, it takes the memory out of it being folded the other way. So when you open it up on your bench, it doesn't roll back on you. So it's important to make sure you always keep these in order so you know which legs you're putting on. So I'm ready to paste my first one now. Uh, and the soaking time for this paper says five to eight minutes. I'm definitely going to give it its eight minutes um, and I'm going to paste two before I start putting the first one up. Make sure you put plenty of paste on. have a few passes over the edge. It's important never to pull your brush back because you'll get paste under the edge of the paper, onto the face of it. And pull it down to the other edge. What you want to do is make sure you set a timer for that for eight minutes and when the alarm goes off, put it up. And make sure you've got them in the right order. Paste in a second piece.
the edges of the paper are the most important to get paste on. to put them up once they're ready. So that's all I'm going to show you of the cutting and the pasting. You get the idea there. So I'll show you the um, putting it up on the rest of the wall, cutting around the socket. Right, that's the timer up. So the light's not too great here, but you get the idea. And there's other videos to show you more. So, taking your first piece on the plumb line, making sure you've got enough overhang on the ceiling. Now, don't put the full piece on, only put where the line is, where your plumb line is. And make sure it follows your plumb line down. Before you actually spread out your paper. And using your paper hanging brush, side to side push it into the corners with your fingers making sure there's no bubbles Trimming off using the back of the scissors, using quite a bit of pressure, pull it across the top along the ceiling. And what that will do is it will create a line on the back of your paper, and then you can follow that line and cut it off. Never easy. And you can repeat that process down the side and along the bottom and when you've cut off all your waste paper wipe off the waste paste don't leave any paste on so next time you come to decorate it'll all bubble up on the ceiling and when you put your paint over it all right i'll show you some of the other longer lengths and then i'll show you cutting around the socket and the finished job that's the first two pieces up now and I've come to this corner over here um, so there's a piece to be cut off to go in this strip for the next piece coming round but obviously you want to try and keep the pattern looking good up the corner so what you need to do is find the widest point and make a measurement with enough to come round by a couple of millimetres, two to three millimetres. So that's two and a half inches from there to come round a little bit. And I'm going to cut that off the right hand side of my paper. I'll show you that now. Taking your tape measure, put your paper so it's nice on the edge of the bench, nice and straight. Find two and a half inches 
on your tape measure and holding that on the edge of your paper and your finger on the edge of the bench and using your pencil down the side pull it down the bench and make a mark down the paper making sure your paper keeps straight and then trimming off making sure you leave the pencil line on Hold your scissors on the bottom of the bench and then that piece is ready to go up in the corner and then what you need to do with this piece measure the size of it, measure around from the corner on the wall, allowing for a millimetre to two millimetres again, overlap so you can do a little bit of trimming and that should give you the pattern. They're never perfect, corners are never perfect, you can only try your best. That's the first corner piece in. So what I've done is I've measured the remaining paper on the bench from the offcut and on the widest part of the chimney breath of the chimney stack I've measured from the corner out and made a mark and off that mark now I'm going to plumb a line down this wall so then this piece can be put on from the plumb line round to the corner then you obviously work your pattern in because you always need to keep your paper plumb for your next lengths going round. Right, so that's that piece on now. Again, they're never easy, but you can see it's generally matched up this corner. The light's not good. Okay. So I say what I did with that one has been plumbed on the chimney breast and I'm going to splice that other piece in because there's a mirror going here so you, you'll only see a little bit of the splice um, if you do see any. So the next piece is going to be put on to this side which then will take me around this corner then I'll have to go around another corner and then I'm onto the flat of the wall. One important thing is your overlap adhesive to overlap the paper in the corners. Drop onto the floor. And again, not putting the full piece onto the wall, find where your pattern matches. Then using your paper hanging brush, push out from side to side, getting rid of any bubbles, making sure it's nicely put up and not overlapping. That's pretty good. Show you trimming off at the top again using the back of your scissors. Make sure it's nicely pushed up against the ceiling and then pushing hard, pull along the top of the ceiling and it'll put a line up the back of your paper. Not easy to follow. Sometimes I do put a pencil mark on the front and cut from the front. But it's always better to try this way first.
taking your cloth, wipe off any paste that's on the ceiling. I'll just show you the bottom. Show your patterns nicely butt up. And spread it out side to side, get rid of any bubbles. And then along the skirting board, just make sure it's nicely tucked in using your finger and your nail and then I'm going to use a pencil to make a, a line across the bottom because it's difficult to see on this paper I'm going to make sure that I cut off the pencil line so you're not leaving a mark on the paper off the paste on the skirting board. And you're on to your next piece. So what I'll show you now is cutting round a socket and then I'll show you the finished wall. Release your paper over it. And then make sure your joint is nicely in line and butted up. Let's spread any bubbles out. And then sometimes what I usually do is find the corners of the socket and push with my thumbs on either corner. And that usually leaves enough mark what you can see. But with this sock with this type of paper you can't quite see it so what you need to do is just put a couple of pencil marks not beyond the socket just to point to where the corner is and then take the paper off the wall, off the socket put a hole in the center and then to each corner you want to cut out beyond the pencil line. Nice neat cut. And that should fit round your socket then. Be careful when you're pushing it into place so you don't rip the paper. So when you're quite satisfied where it is, taking your pencil, you can make a mark across the top using your finger against the wall to leave a bit of a gap. It's 
So I'll make a mark around the socket paper. And I'm going to mark the skirting board while I'm here. under this skirting board. And just cut off the waste. Then you can unscrew your socket. You're better having the electric off while you're doing this. But then push the paper behind the socket. Now you can see how much I've got there. There's hardly anything. But it's just enough to push around the back. Don't be shoving anything down the back too far, especially the paper, you know. And don't forget the bottom one. Wipe off any paste round. Making sure your joints spotted up and there's no bubbles. socket back. Okay, so I've got one more piece to put on and then I'll show you the finished wall and then the finished room. All finished. And it looks really nice that paper. It's done well along the ceiling as well. I've not lost um, a flower half a flower through the ceiling which I'm pleased with. Alright, tidy up and I'll show you the finished room. So the job's finished now. I'll give you a quick look around the room. So there's a new mirror going on there. 
the ceiling has been papered and all the walls have been papered and it's come up really well <laughs>